Hello, and welcome to this webinar on the business owner profile. I'm Russell Sickles, senior consultant with Griffin Hammes Associates, a consulting firm that supports people as they create their own economic opportunities. I'm recording this in West Virginia, and I'm joined today by Daniel Nazet, veteran and soon to be small business owner. So Danny, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself a bit. Hello, my name is Danny Nazat, and uh, I met Russell through the Veteran Entrepreneurial Boot Camp program last year, and uh, he and I have struck a relationship, and we're uh, we're hoping to you know show some growth out of this here video. Thanks, Danny. Um, this is the first webinar in a three-part series in partnership with the Institute for Veterans and Military Families at Syracuse University. As mentioned, the first webinar, this webinar, focuses on the business owner profile a tool that can be used by prospective business owners to organize information about their business concepts into their first actionable steps toward proof of concept and feasibility planning. The second webinar in the series focuses on government benefits and cash benefits that might be available to you through the VA, the Department of, of Defense, and through Social Security. These benefits not only provide financial stability during business planning in the early stages of startup and operations, they can also pay for business startup costs. The third webinar is specifically focused on leveraging government resources. This is where we talk more specifically about those benefits that may be available to you through the VA, Department of Defense, or Social Security. The government resources that we focus on are those that generally don't require repay repayment as a loan would, they're grant-like. Eligibility for these resources are based on veteran status, disability status, or income. Let's talk about what you're getting into today. The business owner profile is a simple and effective tool to help entrepreneurs begin to organize information related to the proposed business ventures. The profile uses an approach called person-centered business planning that recognizes the universal need for business and personal supports. Simply put, the business owner profile maps a process that seeks out a fit between a person's skills, talents, and preferences and a viable business idea. In this process, Business ideas come from the individual's experiences, skills, relationships, and knowledge of opportunities, and are then matched with a market that accepts this project, accepts the product or service. This approach focuses on supports and not on remediating deficits. And unlike traditional economic development approaches, the process starts with the person and their business ideas, and then seeks to find a market rather than first finding a market and then forcing people to produce a product or service that they may not be committed to or excited about. After reviewing what the business owner profile is about, Danny and I will spend the rest of the webinar going through it. We will review how it's organized and used by looking at a model, and also Danny will share his business owner profile. We've all heard about the myth of the entrepreneur. The stories about small business owners that work 80 hours per week and do it all, producing the product or service, managing uh, marketing and sales, while also doing the books. It's not uncommon still for self-employment gatekeepers, uh, coaches, funders, and others, to use formal paper, paper and pencil tests, checklists, evaluations, and assessments that measure interests, skills, and traits that supposedly judge whether a prospective business owner is this kind of person, and then predict whether or not they'll be successful. Examples of self-employment checklists and evaluation questions include, do you understand that owning a business may involve working 12 to 16 hours a day, possibly six days a week and holidays? Are you prepared to possibly lose your investment or your savings? Are you prepared for your life to be ruined, essentially? Uh, are you aware that there is a less than 50-50 chance that you will be in business two years from now? These are all uh, literal questions from uh, self-employment checklists that we found. Most of these notations or notions, excuse me, of entrepreneurs are at best partial truths. You don't have to be superhuman, you know, like the squirrel uh, in the superhero pose here, or want to take over the world like just Jeff Bezos starting Amazon to start a business. It is true that many business owners work long, hard hours, but it's also true that many business owners work hours that fit and work for them. Profitable businesses allow own owners to hire others to do some of the work. And many small businesses don't require eight hours a week, you know, working 12 to 16 hours a day, six days a week, and holidays, doing everything to operate successfully. Self-employment may involve more risk than wage employment, 
but the business owner decides what risk is acceptable and what risk is not. Jeff Bezos on the right uh, graduated from Princeton University, worked at a hedge fund prior to starting Amazon, and was loaned $300,000 from his parents to get his business going. He also received crucial support from his then spouse with startup and other activities when he quit his day job to start Amazon. Regarding the chances of business survival, there's some conflicting information out there, but the data seems to show that startups have more than a 50% chance of surviving five years, with 30% of businesses surviving their 10th year. Compare this data to the median number of years that workers are in a wage sal salary or job, which is 4.6 years. This means that half of the people in a wage job have spent less than 4.6 years in that job, and half have spent more than 4.6 years in that job. All right, so the data means that five years from now, you have roughly the same odds of being in a job that you start tomorrow as you do of running the business that you start tomorrow. The business owner profile can help you counter the two biggest reasons for company, company failures. The first is broadly known as incompetence, referring to the lack of preparation and planning, both in regard to the business match to the individual and also the daily or routine business tasks. The second major reason for business failure is a lack of balanced experience, meaning that the person was good at one part of the business, but not the other parts needed to run the business and did not adjust business operations accordingly. One of the assumptions of this webinar is that all new businesses will benefit from the assistance of a team that utilizes community resources, which includes money for startup expenses. This process reflects the reality that all business owners have support, help, and assistance. And this is especially true during startup. And they do not run their businesses completely by themselves. The startup period for businesses is difficult because, by definition, there are necessary costs to enter the marketplace. Think tools, equipment, supplies, fees, advertising, marketing, etc., before the first sale can take place. Our assumption is that most businesses will need to access other people's money, or OPM, during startup, and to do so, prospective business owners will need to show how the business fits them, and also that the business will eventually make enough money to operate on business revenues while generating a healthy profit. One way to look at the business owner profile, and later the business plan, is as the beginning of a systematic and thorough approach to research and planning that is adaptive and results in marketing documents. You and everyone in your corner, of course, believes that your idea is a good one and will work. That's wonderful, uh, but your opinion, you know, I know this will work, won't be enough to convince potential funders that your perspective is correct. You've got to show them with solid evidence that you and your business idea are worth the risk of investment. Uh, for those of you, you know, if you can bootstrap your business with your own money, that's also wonderful. Prospective business owners uh, in this position will find the profile a useful tool as they begin their journey to startup. This tool and others will help you describe what works for you, consider your options, and assist with operations planning in your first steps towards, towards implementation. Entrepreneurs should have a bias towards action, but that bias should, not, should be informed by a reasonable amount of planning and consideration and also should adapt to the entrepreneurs in the marketplace's needs. We've talked a bit about the myths, misunderstandings, and mystifications surrounding the cult of the entrepreneur. The business owner pro profile does not buy into that. It is not a psychometric personality test that measures your aptitude as a, as a prospective business owner. It is also not an oracle that predicts whether or not your business will be successful. Owning and operating a small business does not require testing to assess one's potential business aptitude. It also does not filter its process through perceived academic or skills levels that are thought to correspond to self-employment success. Entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial attitude assessments, which seek to find out whether or not a prospective business owner has the right stuff to be a business owner, are also not required. Many people who want to start a business, if they're lucky, already have ideas and a variety of resources to support them in their venture. Many others do not. For prospective business owners in either category, the business owner profile is useful to refine a business direction. Information discovered when completing the profile process leads into market research, feasibility testing, financial development, and later developing the business plan and designing the supports necessary for startup and operational business success. The business owner profile is a tool that serves as a guide when considering what is most crucial for the long-term success 
of your prospective business. It creates an objective representation of what is most important to you, regardless of the particular business idea. This information is used to match different business possibilities to your own unique goals and conditions for success. Most of this presentation will cover the specifics of the profile. Of course, supports, market information, and other work considerations may make now not the best time to pursue a business startup. For a business to be successful, production and management tasks related to operations must either be completed by the business owner or other identified supports. All businesses rely on both paid and unpaid supports. There is not a successful business that has ever existed where the business owner handles all tasks related to the business. Ernesto Soroli, founder of the Soroli Institute, says that no one succeeds alone. He calls the three main elements of business operation the trinity of business management. These three elements are producing the product or service, marketing, which is interacting with customers regarding their needs and promoting what you're offering, and financial management, everything related to keeping the books, taxes, managing cash flow, et cetera. In his famous TED Talk, Dr. Sroli says that he's worked with 55,000 entrepreneurs all over the world and never met a single person who can do all three parts of the Trinity well. As we mentioned earlier, he says that one of the major reasons for business failure is when someone who's really good at one part of the Trinity, say producing a, the product or service, tries to handle a part that they're not so good at, say the books. They end up making mistakes that harm business prospects. Other reasons that someone may not pursue self-employment include the prospective business owner cannot find a market for the product or service currently. Uh, this isn't necessarily a reason to abandon self-employment as some ad adaptation and modification of the original business idea may find a successful path forward. Sometimes self-employment self -employment is chosen as a direct result of wage employment not working out because people really don't know what else to do. Um, traditional approaches towards wage employment are working less and less for the average American worker. Starting a business may be a reasonable response to labor market changes for many people, where they are pushed, essentially, into self-employment because of a perceived lack of options. However, there are more entrepreneurial approaches towards wage employment that circumvent the labor market approach. For instance, presenting a small business with a proposal that describes a unique employment arrangement highlighting your skills and talents and, and the benefits you bring to the business if hired. This approach is called customized employment and uses negotiation to create a one-off or unique job. You can view, you, you can Google Griffin Hammes Associates and check out our website to learn more about customized employment. We caution prospective business owners who feel that they have no other choice than to start a business to consider that they may have additional options. To recap, the business owner profile can be considered a first step towards the business plan. Writing a business plan is outside the experience of many entrepreneurs, and there are a host of business consultants and supports, such as the Small Business Development Centers, to assist creating the plan. Business plans should never be the absolute determining factor in supporting a business, but they are crucial if external funding is required, as we mentioned. For example, bank loans, microloan funds, funds from investors or vocational rehabilitation or social security funding. The power of the business owner profile and later the business plan is that it presents the opportunity to think critically about the needs of the entrepreneur and the future business. It begins mapping out the critical decision-making points and allows the individual to think through his or her commitments. It also begins to clarify when capital, equipment, labor, inventory, and various other resources will be needed. The business owner profile and later the business plan also provide the symbolic power proving the person's dedication to the business venture. Most importantly, the business owner profile and business planning provide an opportunity to pull together a team to research and write the profile and later the plan, thereby laying the foundation for a supportive network of friends and colleagues available to help at various stages of the business startup. The business owner profile can't guarantee a straight line to success, but if done well, it will lessen the false starts and wrong turns that can delay a successful startup. So let's briefly introduce the business owner profile sections. 
The approach starts with self-reflection and identification of skills, interests, capacities, and support needs. This information is the foundation for exploring the community to identify market needs that match the business owner, as opposed to traditional business development models that aim to identify the market need and require the individual to adapt to the business. There are numerous techniques and tools available for identifying and capturing this type of information. However, it is critical to understand that the primary goal is to get information beyond what is typically available in a file or in a few brief meetings. The first three sections provide valuable information that serves as a, as a foundation for identifying potential business concepts. These sections can be completed prior to selecting the business concept. And these sections are section one, snapshot. The snapshot is information related to the individual's past work experiences, skills, and education and training. Section two, career goals, where we're looking both at short-term and long-term uh, career goals and work goals. In section three, conditions for success. These include a consideration of income requirements, environmental factors, anticipated support needs, benefits, and health insurance requirements. Sections four and five should be completed after a business concept has been identified and can be completed for each business concept that's identified. These sections include section four, summary of tasks required to operate the business, this identifies all production and management steps necessary to run the business and identifies the necessary supports and who will be responsible for, for providing those supports. In section five, the business owner plan. This lists the business owner, or excuse me, this lists the potential resources for any training or accommodation needs that are identified in section four, business operations. You should have a blank uh, in model versions of the business owner profile to review. Let's review each, se each section in detail, uh, going through the, the broad outline of each section and looking at a sample, and then Danny will talk about his uh, section. Section one acts as a background, acts as providing background information for the business owner. It's called the snapshot, snapshot section. It provides three summaries. The first is a summary of past work uh, and, business, and business experience. The second is a summary of skills, abilities, and strengths. And the third is a summary of education and training. As we mentioned earlier, standard vocational training and testing, such as psychometric tests or IQ tests or attitude tests are not used. The business owner profile is, is a descriptive tool that yields the critical information needed to begin developing a plan for business startup and also for de designing supports necessary for business success. Section one, snapshot sample. Joe Entrepreneur, an amalgam of, uh, of people, of a couple people we've met in the past. Uh, one snapshot, summary of past work and business experience. I have over 25 years of musical experience consisting of performing vocals, playing musical instruments, songwriting, and teaching and training. I've worked extensively in studios, recording, vocalizing songs, and composing. I also have a basic understanding of managing a studio. Technical skills include working with people, providing guidance and vocal performance, understanding of how to step back and allow people to have their own creative voice, voice coaching, developing style, composing music according to people's vocal ability and genre. A summary of skills, abilities, and strengths. Uh, Joe mastered vocal performances and acquired an extensive knowledge of performing arts, including television, radio, major play productions, gospel shows, background vocals for several highly esteemed artists from other genres, culture writing and singing, uh, impromptu. I have strengths, this person, Joe has strengths in writing, composing, vocalizing, and form good connections with churches and can unite and bring people together at places such as community groups, religious congregations, choirs, groups, and soloists. And then a summary of education and training. Attended music college and had apprentice style, apprentice type experience. I've attended many vocal workshops from known and unknown artists and performers, and I've also extensively it's extensive informal training through mentorships, leaders, and great entrepreneurs in the music industry. So we can see here in the, in this, in the um, snapshot section is that we're getting a sense of why, you know, what has led people, what experiences, what, you know, work and, and life experiences, business experiences um, have led to development of skills about abilities and strengths, and maybe education and training they've had in the past that has led them to this point 
uh, in their life where they're describing who they are and why um, the, the later uh, chosen uh, business concept idea may make sense for them. And, uh, and now we'll uh, ask Danny to, to share his, his uh, snapshot. So Danny, if you wouldn't mind. I'd be happy to. My summary of past work experience, uh, I started out as a jet engine mechanic, uh, golf instructor, crane inspector, building maintenance manager, swimming pool service and repair technician, certified uh, commercial driver, uh, park and recreational trail maintenance, bourbon distillery tour guide, bakery and bread intern, and uh, now I uh, drive a vehicle to transport disabled veterans to and from their appointments. Uh, my technical skills range from mechanical to very entrepreneurs. <laughs> my technical uh, skills range from mechanical to interpersonal to creative. My summary of skills and abilities and strengths, I'm skilled in mechanical procedures and value structured organization, understanding that mistakes can range from life or death repercussions to doughy or crusty bread able to take in technical and comprehensive information and make it relatable to crane operators, golfers, and tourists. Strengths in deep curiosity and, in, and an interest uh, to listen and learn from mentors supports lifelong goal setting and the ability to develop achievable plans. My summary of education training uh, was in the United States Air Force and provided uh, jet engine mechanic training that developed uh, I did, where I developed the journeyman level of propulsion theory and uh, repair maintenance knowledge. The Golf Academy of the South offered training on golf business management, tournament management, and instructional operations. I've completed over 122 credit uh, hours of uh, university credit with the major uh, majority of, of those credits earned as an adult student, which presented opportunities for me to broaden my horizons around culture, journalism, creative writing, uh, and my uh, experience at Bluegrass Bakery as an intern advanced my skills around the intricacies of baking and gave insight to the restaurant management side. Awesome. Thanks, Danny. You're welcome. Section two of the business owner profile looks at career goals. Um, the, the first part looks at the business, a, a general uh, description of the business, then shifts to short-term goals and long-term goals. Using Joe Entrepreneur as, as an example for Section 2 Career Goals, Joe, Joe's business description is that his goal is to own and operate a studio that he will use as a training and teaching location and, that he, and where he'll rent out to local artists and record his own music to sell. His short-term goal is to produce other artists, teach students in piano and voice performance, provide music teaching services for youth as well as adults, and then to grow his business and become self-sustaining and create other employment opportunities for others. And also to create time to allow for composing and duplication of his music and publication. Long-term, his goal is to become a well-established artist performing in large venues. Andy, would, would you mind sharing your, your career goals? I would love to. Um, my career goals are uh, my business description. Uh, my goal is to own and operate a food truck that provides an authentic Cajun cuisine experience to customers. Because the truck will be fully equipped, I would like to also rent it to people who are interested in serving food to the public without uh, them having a large commitment um, of, of uh, financial commitment or truck ownership and develop a food truck model that can help promote veteran entrepreneurial ownership. My short-term goal is to produce authentic Cajun cuisine to the public and become a sustainable self-employment business. I would like to eventually own three trucks that can serve the Lexington, Louisville, and Northern Kentucky region. The trucks would also provide jobs and become a vessel for, or, or a model that encourages food truck entrepreneurialism. My long-term goal is to become a well-established brand capable of promoting self-employment for myself and others by offering uniquely affordable franchise-like business options in the food truck business. Great, thanks Danny. Section three of the business owner profile looks at conditions for success, specifically uh, looking at income and health insurance requirements, uh, the natural skills and interests that, that 
person has that uh, are intended to match the business idea. Any um, in what we call impairment related conditions for employment or, or uh, accommodations that are needed based on what on the person's support needs. And then family or other personal considerations for employment that must be considered when, when one's thinking about starting the business. So looking at the section three conditions for success sample for Joe Entrepreneur, uh, his conditions for success include uh, monthly income and health insurance requirements where he says that his current income is based on the tips from performance that he currently does. He currently does not have health insurance. His business must bring in at least $2,000 a month of profit to cover living expenses and to purchase health insurance. Natural skills and interests that are intended to match the business idea. His goal is to use his musical talent, both vocal and with instruments, to be self-sufficient. His hope is to also utilize his joy in teaching others as a means for generating income. Looking at uh, conditions related to his, uh, what we call impairment-related conditions for employment, as a result of his arthritis, he cannot stand for long periods, more than one, an hour and a half without a break. His depression and anxiety experience is managed for the most part through medications and counseling, although I do experience a decrease in stamina and motivation in the winter season. I'm not comfortable managing the finances of the business without support, since that's an area of weakness for me. And then lastly, family or other personal considerations for employment. His sister has been a huge support for him in thinking through this business idea. I'd like to, con to continue to have her involvement as I move forward. All right, and then uh, section three, uh, Danny, would you mind sharing your conditions, the conditions you found that would be sure. a success? Sure. Um, my identified conditions for success include uh, uh, monthly income and health insurance requirements also. I received my health insurance from the VA, so there's no insurance requirement for me. Uh, but the food truck would have to net about $2,000 a month to cover current living expenses. And I think this is attainable. Natural skills and interests that are intended to match a business idea. I really enjoy connecting with people and food uh, is a vessel to do that. We all must eat and food is at our course. Like music, food can transcend the body politic and provide space for cultural growth outside tribalism. I'm lucky to have uh, been born in a family filled with rich cooking culture, and I love sharing my family's food culture with others. Making people happy uh, is my greatest asset, and uh, very few things bring joy to a soul like good food. My, some of my impairments, uh, related to conditions for employment um, as a result of my um, physical and mental impairments. I can no longer dependably fulfill the traditional demands required by employees. Uh, my joints are deteriorating and I have severe nerve damage in my lower extremities. I can manage my pain and depression and anxiety with medication and counseling, but my symptoms are unpredictable and some days I just cannot be counted on. I can manage my personal finances and I can reduce the goods to sell, but I'm not comfortable managing the more complex finances of businesses without support. My family and the other personal considerations for employment uh, are strong. I have a tremendous support system in place to help me succeed with this endeavor. My girlfriend and partner of 14 years is my biggest support system. She's skilled at marketing and has a vast network of connections throughout the state, which have utilized, um, which we have utilized for our feasibility research for the food truck. She's very excited and eager to help get this project going. As the food truck business grows, my son will become more and more involved in the operations. He will run many of the day-to-day -day operations, which will provide time for me to accomplish the long-term goals of more food trucks, and entrepreneurial development. My brother-in-law is my insurance agent, and I have ample technical support from other family, friends, and connections throughout Kentucky. Awesome, thanks Danny. Okay, so uh, we wrapped up the, the sections one through three, which are really about uh, background and you know, telling your, your story a little bit about, um, about you know, what strengths uh, you have, you know, what works for you, work history, that kind of stuff. Um, before we move into sections four and five, which get into more of, of kind of your thinking, it's, again, we're not in the business plan yet, that comes later, uh, but uh, we're 
after you, you hit uh, section three, the conditions for your success, you know, what must be in place to make the most likely that you'll be successful. Uh, four and five, we start getting into like tasks, operations management, and you start kind of shifting into what is more um, business oriented, you know, what looks more like a business plan. Um, but before we get into that, I, I did want to see if we could just talk a little bit about, um, you, you know, I, I, getting to know you a little bit and then, you know, through the, when we do the, the EVB projects in the past, um, you know, it's, I mean, I, I think it's the rule and I don't think there are any exceptions, at least in, in my experience, that, that the veterans that I have met um, and continue to meet are, um, you know, they, 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 and I think it's part of obviously maybe why you go into this, into this service, um, part of the training and part of the education you get there and then the people you meet. Um, but what I, I learned is that, you know, veterans, um, you know, they have a lot of skills, right? And, and they can do a lot of stuff. They have typically, you know, I, I mean, there's been a wide array of, of business ideas that people had. Um, so there's a variety of interests, you know, everybody's super unique in terms of their background, obviously, where they're headed, what they want to do with their business. And just in general, I think that, and again, I, I'm sure there are exceptions of this, and you, you probably met, you met a lot of people that are the exceptions, but I just think people, veterans tend to be really good at stuff, you know, they're, they're pretty good at a lot of stuff. So I think that if you're, you know, when you're deciding on a, on a, uh, a business startup, um, you know, it just seems it's good to have a lot of options, and it seems like veterans, you know, do tend to have a lot of options. So, and, and you know, as, as when we went through with your kind of life experience, um, it seemed to be the case, you know, you were part of, part of that, the group. Um, so we, saw, we talked about that through uh, sections one through three, the snapshot of your history, um, your, your story, your current career goals, um, things you need to be successful. And uh, before we move to sections four and five, I was just wondering if you could talk to us a little bit about, you know, like again, I, I know you could do and have done a lot of stuff, but uh, like, why um, are you going to do you know this idea now? Like, why does it? Why do you think that this is the direction you want to go? You know, based on uh, kind of your story to date, you wouldn't mind. I'd be happy to. Um, well, yeah, I don't think I'm that special uh, or, or unique from other veterans. I think veterans in general. I echo what you say. You know, we grow up in the military, most of us, and. Uh, we're, we're not just allowed to do the job we've been trained for. We have to cross train. We have to, uh, uh, you know, do all sorts of things that we're not uh, trained to do. So we have to adapt. We have to learn to do these things. And it develops this sense of confidence and resourcefulness inside of us. And that often isn't able to be utilized in just a job if you're working for someone where they're requiring you to do a specific set of tasks. We're really good at tasks, but we're also good at taking tasks and evaluating them and making them better. And so what you end up with, with me is you have someone who started out with, at an early age as a jet engine mechanic. So I, I developed a level of um, uh, understanding about mechanics and general procedures really early on and because it was in aircraft, which the tolerances and, you know, they're very high. They're, they're not like working on um, an automobile. Nothing against automobile mechanics because I'm not an automobile mechanic, so I wouldn't know how to do that. But I did work on jet engines and the tolerances and, and uh, things that go along with that type of work, you can't pull a jet over to the side of the road. If something breaks on it, it generally is coming out of the sky and you can't afford to do that. So you have all these systems in place, redundant systems and, and other things that really come into play. And then you, what, I, what I did was I took that information and I was very fortunate and I was able to parlay that along the way into all the other careers that I did. Done. It, it didn't matter what it was, whether it was working in swimming pool uh, um, maintenance or uh, cranes. Uh, I was a safety crane, crane safety consultant where I inspected cranes, taught people how to operate cranes. These same um, fundamentals that I learned as a jet engine mechanic in, in, in the, the Air Force, uh, I was able to apply and almost every time I was able to do more than what was expected of me because I just, it, more was expected of us in the military. So we became very resourceful. Um, with regards to how I 
ended up where I am, as I said, almost every step of the way. I started out as a jet engine mechanic. I, uh, once I got out of the Air Force, I tried to go to college. Uh, I did, but then I went to, um, uh, uh, I worked in a swimming pool, at a swimming pool company where I cleaned pools and did maintenance on pools. I, I also went back to uh, college to uh, get into the golf business. I learned how to teach golf, uh, instruct golf, run tournaments, all of these things when you think about details and organizational thoughts and how to go about uh, being consistent, and producing a good product, a reliable product. That's all military training that helped me advance in those careers. I got out of the golf business for a while because I was hired into a crane business where I, I started out as a wire rope and rigging salesman, and I advanced all the way up to a, a manager of the crane consulting uh, firm, uh, which is a sister company and under the umbrella of the, of the main company. And I ended up doing so well there that it afforded me a lot of flexibility and additional learning. But, you know, like a lot of things, um, you know, being a veteran, you struggle sometimes because we're trained to operate inside this field of action that doesn't always mimic the civilian side of things. And so we are used to strict, rigid rules that are always able to be applied. And if they're not applied, somebody's asking why. We're in the, in, in the other side, things are different. And I noticed that after some time, I began to struggle and, you know, just trying to figure out where do I fit in? Why am I struggling with these? these rules that I, you know, that, that are like vague. And, and so long story short, I went through a very difficult personal time where I struggled uh, with my marriage, uh, started struggling at my job. And I went through this really tough period and it, and it's taken me a while to sort of come out of it. But through all that, through my military training, through my life experiences, I figured out that I didn't need to be some sort of Superman some sort of superhero that gets me uh, that that I have to be superhuman to, to achieve to become an entrepreneur. And so, at this point, my disabilities don't really allow me to work a job and be 100% dependable the way an employee normally needs you. So I began to think, how can I take what I know? And, and, and turn it into a career or a job that allows some flexibility uh, to work around my disability and uh, sort of tickled my, my creative side. And so, uh, you know, I, I started looking into resources. I started looking into the IBMF resources through University of Syracuse. And I joined the, the boot camp. I was lucky to get accepted into it. It's a wonderful program. I learned a lot about how to become and all the various uh, amazing resources available to uh, uh, future entrepreneurs. I met Russell through it. And uh, what ends up happening is, for me at least, I took, I didn't, I didn't look back. I looked forward and I applied all these things that I've learned and I've created this idea that I can, I can develop a business that works for me, helps me work around my disabilities. And it also, hopefully in the future, will allow me to maybe provide a blueprint that could work for someone else who might be struggling with the same things I struggle with. Um, with, with that said, there's a lot of resources available for us. Um, uh, and if if you uh, are a veteran and you are disabled by chance and you happen to qualify for your state's vocational rehab or rehabilitation programs or through the federal government or the VA and you can qualify for the VRNE, which may have a different name now, but it's called Folk Rehab. Uh, those are really good programs that offer lots of resources, not just funding, but training and uh, assistance to get you started in your business. Uh, almost hard to describe what that offering is, how beneficial it is. It's so good to be, you know, to be lucky enough to participate in those two programs. Um, so with that said, you know, I, I grew up in Louisiana. Um, I've 
grown up in a culture of music and fun and social and food. And I've always cooked for, for, for people. And through my last 30 to 40 years of cooking and getting to know people, the it's come to the forefront that people like Cajun food and there's not much of it. And um, I, I've always been asked if I wanted to open up a restaurant. And while that sounds appealing, the to, to own a restaurant requires lots of outlay of capital, which I don't have. It requires that you manage employees, which I'm, because of my disabilities, employees demand, or they, they expect, you know, regular working hours. And sometimes I just can't get up and work. So uh, it, it's not um, uh, as ideal to, to think of this like uh, brick and mortar structure with employees that I have to be responsible for. And, you know, that kind of makes me nervous because I might, I might be out for two or three days and what are they supposed to do if I'm not good enough to keep a system in place? So the food truck works fine for me because it's not, I'm not going to require a lot of employees, if any, and what, which ones I do and, and the flexibility of the food truck, if I, if I don't operate for a day, there's no big deal. I don't have doors that need to be open. I can, as long as I fulfill my obligations the day before, I, I'm not really obligated to do anything further. So I'm hoping to, you know, develop a, a nice, simple menu of Cajun food, put it on the on the truck, and provide an online ordering service and uh, and a an actual um, on-site location where I can show up at different venues and cook food for them right on the spot. So that's kind of where I am. Awesome. Hey, Russell, uh, now might be a good time to uh, pull up some of the photographs that I sent you and we can focus down a little more on what kind of food and a little bit more about, you know, the specifics of who I am and why I feel so confident or why I'm so proud to want to offer this kind of food to people. Awesome. Let's do that. So, Again, um, I was born in uh, South Louisiana, a town named Opelousas. For a brief period of time, it was actually the capital during uh, uh, the Civil War. And uh, it's right in the hub of Cajun country, uh, in between the Atchafalaya River to the east and the city of Crowley with all of its rice production uh, in the west. This is kind of an authentic uh, architectural style home. Uh, don't see too many of those today, but in the old days, you can see they're built above ground because we have a lot of flooding back home. Crawfish come out of the ground, so that's a natural food source for us. And you can see how there's lots of porches where people used to sit out and uh, take a break from the, from the heat and, and uh, really high pitched steep roofs because you have a lot of rain, rain in Louisiana also. So this is me in 1986. I couldn't find photographs of uh, me when I was younger. I, I just uh, figured I'd start with the story. You get the picture. I was a little kid. You look pretty uh, young there. Yeah. 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 Grow, grown up fishing and hunting and doing everything that somebody grows up in Louisiana, which is considered the sportsman's paradise. Mm -hmm. But this is me in 1986 after I had the uh, gotten my roots, my teeth cut in South Louisiana, and I was off to the Air Force to, to join, uh, you know, join our military. How old were you there? I was, uh, let's see, 19, almost 19, not quite. I, I was 18 and a half, so young. Yeah, nice. And this is me today, a little different, uh, just a smidge, and that's the food truck that I purchased. It, uh, it requires a lot of work. Uh, left, uh, some some paint, uh, all of the equipment on the inside, some uh, some different uh, different updates and modernizations. It needs to be uh, uh, electrified and, and uh, gas needs to be added to it. I need an air conditioner, a big exhaust fan, lots of the basically equipment that makes it a kitchen and it'll be on wheels. So I'm I'm looking forward to getting that up and running. So a little back to uh, where I come from. Back home, uh, we have festivals every every weekend for the most part. 
we don't really need a reason or weather or anything to have a problem. There's always or to, to have a, a good time. In Louisiana, we always say, hey, let's pass a good time yet. Yeah. And what that means is it's it's time to get the food rolling, get the music going, and let's start dancing. Because while the, the different components uh, of food and music and dancing come together, it's really about the socialization. We're really sociable, social people, which is one of the reasons why I think I'm going to be perfectly suited as I look into who I am, because this is what I grew up doing, being social with people. So a food truck is a very mobile social type of restaurant if you were to look at it that way it's just a great picture of you know you'll see this it doesn't matter there'll be seven-year-old kids dancing or 80 year old folks and everybody in between just having a ball in the rain mud it doesn't matter and you know our music is unique it, it, a lot of it is based off of a two-step but uh, you can see the washboard and spoons and the, the big uh accordion and the bass and the drums and stand-up bass and just a real lively music that you when you listen to you you almost can't help yourself but, but want to dance and uh, a lot of people who've never experienced just one simple little live event out in the tiniest town in, in Louisiana come away feeling pretty good about it because it's, it, you don't just hear the music you actually feel the music it gets you to move Going back to the, the music, it transitions to, I'm going to have music playing. I'm going to have Cajun music playing on, on the bus or on, on the van, the, the food truck. And I'm going to have digital projections with pictures and people going on and interviews that I'm, you know, so I'm going to really try to bring Louisiana culture to that truck. This is just a picture of a, a yummy seafood gumbo. You know, I see a lot of places that offer seafood gumbos. And uh, they're yummy, they're good, but back home, you can't eat your food. You can't eat a gumbo with a fork. You can see this is a soup and there's rice underneath it and it has to be eaten with a spoon. Otherwise, for us in South Louisiana, it's hard, it's hard for us to call that a gumbo. So if you, if you eat gumbo with a fork, uh, come and give mine a try. You'll, I think you might find a, a, a nice difference. This is my friend from way back home. Uh, this is at one of the best, uh, most popular uh, old-time grocer. It's a, it's a po' boy, uh, old, old grocery store that serves some of the most popular, most, most renowned uh, po' boy sandwiches, which are submarine-style type sandwiches baked on French bread, and they have every topping you can think of. His name is RJ, and you may not be able to tell by my voice because I've been away for so long, I don't sound Cajun anymore, but when you put me and RJ together, so his voice is definitely going to be part of my food truck. I'm going to have recordings of him because uh, I'll try to imitate him a little bit. He'll, he'll say something along these lines. Um, oh, man, we went down to the food show, food show, and, man, we passed a good time, yeah. And that's how he speaks, and that's how everybody down there speaks, and it's really unique, and it's really rich in culture. So I'm going to have that, as I said, uh, you know, pronounced coming out of the out of the speakers at my truck. Lots of interviews. Mm -hmm. This is just a, a real quick picture. I don't know how well it comes through, but the, that's that's the style of French bread at the old time grocer, and, and I want to recreate that with uh, shrimp, it's filled with shrimp, just loaded with shrimp. There's probably two dozen shrimp on a 12-inch on a sandwich right here. So no shortage of, of yumminess in our food. I should have eaten before we started this, man. I'm, <laughs> my stomach's not going to it's, it's only going to get worse. <laughs> here's, here's some uh, fried alligator with uh, red beans and rice and cornbread. Just a, a very typical festival food, you know. Just you walk up to all these different stands, much like fairs and you know county fairs around our country. Every every place celebrates food, but you'll you'll find you'll still find funnel cakes, and corn dogs, and whatnot. But you'll also have access to these really really good, wonderfully unique foods. <laughs> this is a picture of chicken and sausage gumbo. Uh, this is what you ladle on top of rice. 
uh, just a staple gumbo, chicken and sausage. Uh, if you move a little more towards New Orleans, you'll start to see tomato and okra introduced to it. Where we're from, where I'm from, it's just onions, bell peppers, you know, celery, and some people don't even put that. Some people just put onion, and it's chicken and sausage and then some spices, and that's about it. It's really simple, really stick to your bones, delicious food. This is me preparing a big pot of crawfish etouffee for my girlfriend's 50th birthday. I cooked for probably 100 people that day, and uh, it disappeared fast. So right now, I'm actually, you can see in the background, there's a wok, uh, and I'm frying the crawfish in butter right now uh, mm -hmm. before I put them, reintroduce them into the, the etouffee sauce. But, uh, you know, again, I'm just going to, I'm just, this, this slide show is intended to help you see what kind of food I'll be serving on the truck and how the recipes are all up in my head, and, and uh, they're simple. Our food's very simple, very delicious, and very unique. This is my nanny, which is a, a very, very Cajun thing down in Louisiana. She's uh, usually you have a, a nanny and a paran. A paran is, is the guy, and a nanny is the woman. She's your godmother, and she's supposed to take care of you if something were to happen uh, to your parents. She's kind of like the the church's, uh, the Catholic Church's uh, uh, substitute parents in the event that as a young person something were to happen. She's like my best friend, and her husband, is Danny, his last name is Sashri, maybe a popular name. He's, he's, uh, I'm not sure how related he is to the Sashri family, but these folks know how to cook. So if I ever need any consultation, uh, the Sashri family is always available for me. Um, but this is just in their kitchen. They're making a big pot of gumbo. And you can see to the left the eggs boiling, and that's they're making potato salad right there. So... They're, they're my faves. When we go down home there, they take us out. We go everywhere. You'll, you'll see them in almost all my photographs. Just a picture of some shrimp fettuccine, real simple shrimp, you know, fettuccine, some butter and uh, spices, delicious, easily, easy served meal. I can make that ahead of time and, uh, and ladle it up really fast to people who, who are waiting in line. Everybody uh, probably recognizes boiled crawfish. Uh, it's kind of a tough one to pull off uh, if you're if you don't have access to it and you want it cooked fresh. You, you know, after crawfish is cooked for you know six or eight or ten hours, it's fresh seafood, so it, it begins to you know become less desirable. But we usually take our leftovers and we peel them uh, peel them out out of the shell. And then we'll freeze them and use them the next morning in like crawfish omelets or make crawfish fettuccine with cream sauce. Or we, we use it, to, we don't throw it away, but the, uh, the shells and the, that form of eating crawfish is very popular. It might be the most uh, recognizable meal uh, for, you know, when you associate food with Louisiana and full crawfish. And I will do my best to try to have some out there for the food truck, but it, it, it's going to be a little bit more of a challenge. It'd be very uh, rare. For special occasions. This is uh, my nanny and, and uh, 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 Uncle Danny there, me, my girlfriend, and my son Josh. That's basically my team for the food truck. I also have my cousin who lives in Seattle. She's not in this photograph, but we took a tour of the Tabasco. Uh, real, most everybody knows the hot sauce Tabasco. It's kind of like the original hot sauce in, in many eyes. And uh, we just took this photograph, which I love, but that's, that's going to be my team. I've got my consultants and support uh, in my uh, aunt and uncle and in my, my girlfriend and my son right there. They're going to be part of the team of food, Boo Danny's Food Truck. So there you have it. This is typical of a uh, post-meal in Louisiana. You know, I can't tell if that's Christmas or Thanksgiving, but, you know, you get the picture. That's my aunt. Uh, to the far left of the photograph, that's my, my nanny's big sister. And we, you know, just the giant table of food. And uh, we're all just, you know, laying flat after full bellies and a meal. But that gives you an idea of, you know, some of the different dishes 
that we have. So we're big foodies, music, dancing, but you see the, the common theme is we're always together in big groups. This is at the annual uh, jambalaya that we have. Uh, that's um, my uncle Gene. He's married to the lady that I mentioned, my aunt uh, Margaret Pre in the previous photograph. And that's his nephew, Ray. Uh, Ray is, uh, lives in Gonzales and we have this annual jambalaya cooking. And that's a big giant cast iron pot over a, a burner and they're stirring it with the paddles and getting it going. And it's just, it's a fun all day event. The jambalaya starts at about 10 o'clock in the morning and it's ready, you know, two, three o'clock in the afternoon. It's delicious. This is just a close up inside of that pot uh, before we add the rice. So this is getting close to being done. You got the right moisture content and you drop rice in there and let it steam for 30, 40 minutes and you have some really delicious food and it's very easy to serve up on a food truck. So I'll be doing jambalaya also. And this is my, one of my favorite photographs. Uh, it's my two cousins on the far left and right. They're brothers. And that's my cousin behind me, Larry. Uh, they're just, those are my first cousins. I have others, but they just, this photograph really exudes a, a little hole in the wall bar in, in Louisiana. This is in Lafayette called the meeting place and uh, we're just I had just moved back to Louisiana um, and it's just a real good photograph that I think en encompasses a lot of what what has to offer when you if you ever were to go down there and, and hang out with us for a while so and I think that's the last photograph great but all right well thanks thanks Danny I, I mean obviously um, you know, when I'm thinking about doing this kind of presentation, we're, we're focused on a form, you know, or a, which really is, you know, I, and I don't mean to, I, I say that dismissively, it's, it should, we should call it a tool, right? It's, it's something to help organize information um, to help you, you know, a business, prospective business owner, you in this specific case and others, who I think hopefully will be able to see this, um, you know, and hopefully it'll be useful to them uh, as the first step towards a business plan. But, but what, you know, what you just shared in terms of your story and, and uh, and with those examples, it's great. You know, you did the first three sections and then kind of, you know, showed us with, with those photos. Just that's what it's all about. And so, so just to, you know, when I thought about doing this at first, before I asked you to, to join me, it just was kind of um, quite sterile, you know, and pretty, um, I felt it was kind of useless for, you know, I'm sharing the, the, the model example, but, but having you here as a real human being, obviously, who, who has got some skills and, and uh, you know, got something to offer the world and how you tie it. I mean, I just think, you know, in terms of you tying it into, into who you are and in your relationships, like you say, it's, it's about community, about, about, you know, let the good times roll, even though I, that may be to New Orleans, not, uh, not everywhere where, where, you're, where you grew up. But, um, but I, you know, I just think, uh, especially now, right, considering kind of what we've all been through with COVID, we, we don't need a huge reason to, uh, to party, you know, get people together, right. eat some good food. Right, have a good time. So, so we'll, uh, so I really appreciate that. And you sharing, you know, obviously. Thank um, you for, you know, including yeah. this. This is wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And you sharing your, um, you know, your, your life with us is, is, is uh, or, you know, that part of your life is, is wonderful. So really, I think, you know, um, adds in the, the importance of, yeah, that, you know, this is a tool, it's a form, but the idea is, is that, you know, people, um, you know, aren't going to take your word for it. You know, if you, you just say, hey, I got this great idea, I can do this stuff, I know people love it, you know, as you know, you know, we've got to move towards um, putting things into a, uh, a format, right, to, to get people to, to see what you see, right? Um, and this is the first step of organizing that before you get to the, the business plan. So, um, so now we, we shift, you know, for the kind of the, the focus being like, why are we here? Uh, what, what works for you um, in terms of tasks, um, conditions, that kind of stuff. Now we're shifting more towards, okay, wonderful. You know, let's start to focus um, more of, of, of kind of organizing things uh, from a business planning perspective where you're, you're thinking, okay, for this business idea I have. So the first three uh, areas really can be completed without a business idea, even though, you know, you, you have one uh, um, as, we were, as we did this. Um, but before you go into section four or five, which looks more specifically at the business tasks in terms of production and management, and also um, 
uh, kind of the business owner um, kind of plan, uh, which we'll see, you really, you know, at this point, you have to have uh, an idea or oftentimes um, you're honing on one, but you may have, you know, people may have multiple ideas. So kind of, and again, this is not, it's not super in depth, not super detailed. So you can play around with some ideas and not, not do massive amounts of investments in time and resources and try to play around to figure out which one works for you. Um, that's what we find, you know, I've, I've seen with, with veterans and, and others that, you know, people, like we said, entrepreneurs, you know, the, the idea, you probably heard this, I don't know if they talked about it during EVV, but the idea of a serial entrepreneur, you know, those people who are just always like wanting to do stuff, have ideas, uh, moving fast, you know. Um, so I, I think that approach, again, not, not saying you're superhuman or you know, like, or super, a super person, it's just that people have, tend to have lots of good ideas and, and trying to have a format to put those, um, you know, onto paper to figure out, well, you know, what are those production tasks, management tasks, how do they fit me? So, um, so what we'll do is we'll move into those, this section, section four, I'll, I'll talk about it generally. We'll look through the model, which if you remember, everybody listening is somebody who's doing um, uh, music and piano lessons and doing recording in the studio. And then uh, Danny will share his, his examples and, and we'll, we'll wrap this up. So in section four, as I said, you're starting to look at, you know, if you think of, of, of production or, or, or offering of the, of the service or product, you know, what are the steps that are built in to, to from, you know, from uh, raw materials or, or um, finding um, uh, customers actually delivering that uh, product or service to customers. And, and involved in that are, um, you, you know, thoughts of, uh, you know, one of the, of the, uh, uh, the most important things that, in, as you said, Danny, earlier, uh, in terms of uh, running a successful business is to have um, some scenarios <laughs> you're planning for, right? So things never go as planned perfectly, right? And, and uh, that's the old line, I think I may have said it earlier, I've heard in, in, the, in the military, you know, the, the plan, no plan survives the first contact with the enemy, you know, and I, not, you know, this is a different scenario, but the idea is you, know, you need to have multiple plans and be flexible, and yeah. be adaptive. Um, adaptive and so so what we also want to think about is you know what are, are the contingencies um, you know when, when things don't go as planned you can predict maybe what those things are, are likely to be you know what are the backup plans or even to to um, to you know how you're gonna accommodate uh, something that maybe comes out of the blue uh, also I, I mean I, I don't know you know we'll talk about it in your case but but oftentimes there are pieces uh, of, of the business um, that, that maybe the person doesn't have specific skills or experience to to, um, to engage those tasks right now, right? But, but so you may need to ask somebody to, to teach you how to use a new piece of equipment or maybe to offer a new product or, or kind of a value added piece of that product or service. Um, and then any accommodations too related to, you know, any, any part of life, you know, it could be if you have young kids or like, um, if you, like you said, like if, if um, you know, if I don't, if I'm not feeling up to it to go out on, on this day, you know, um, how, how, do I, um, how, do, how do we handle that? Um, and then also, you know, production's wonderful, uh, you know, big piece of it. As we talked earlier, there's, there's also the management tasks, um, uh, which are, uh, you know, thinking of how, um, you know, the books, uh, money, uh, if you have contracted employees, you know, how's that going to work, uh, licensing, all that, all that kind of stuff, health regs. Um, so we'll talk about that. And then again, same stuff, um, uh, you know, if, if things don't, if there's something that comes up out of the blue, uh, contingencies or or new, new kind of things or accommodations, how, how are we gonna handle them? Okay, so if we're looking at the, the sample of production, if you remember, um, this was the, the gentleman who was gonna do the teach and voice piano recording and have kind of a studio. Um, uh, that person, that business owner, prospective business owner, just again, and this is, this is not, you don't, you know, it needs to be as detailed as you think you need to do to understand, um, to, to walk through, it's a tool for you, but it, you know, as, and it's also a tool as you shift into, into planning and, and create the, um, the materials for others that you may want to fund you or to, to uh, help you or support you in some way. So, you know, it doesn't have to be super, super detailed, like at, uh, number eight, provide customer service. <laughs> um, you don't have, you know, necessarily, it can be broad umbrella group um, um, uh, kind of topics, but you know, as you shift into business planning and depending on who you're talking to, you may need to get a little more specific. Um, but in this case, this, this person uh, going through the production steps of from preparing materials for training teachings, um, all the way to provide customer service, um, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the person was going to do this on their own. Uh, set up performances um, and perform number six there. We'll see when we go through it that, that the, um, the individual in this in the sample had, had uh, family and, and church, I think, folks who were going to help out with that. 
So the sample production and then contingency plans, as we had mentioned, um, that uh, you know, if, if production's dependent on you, what, what's the backup? And so this individual, um, this prospective business owner in the samples uh, said they have two colleagues locally who, who can help with to cover, you know, if, if you're sick or, if, you, know, um, you know, something you have to, you have to cover, or you, you want to go to, you want to be able to make it. Um, performance would have to be rescheduled if, if he has a conflict. Uh, production, production tasks that will require training for you to perform. Some initial training on new studio equipment, you know, recording that kind of stuff. I additionally, need to finish voice professor, excuse me, voice professor degree, and then uh, production tasks that will require accommodation, require assistance setting up and taking down for performances, moving large equipment, i.e., speakers and instruments. So, um, you know, and, and Danny, uh, you could maybe talk briefly about that, but just um, oftentimes in our in the world of you know, you're right, VR and E is called something different, and I, I it just got called something different. I can't remember what it what it is. Um, I apologize to all you listening, but um, we have a tendency to focus, uh, you know, I think too much on, on those deficits, you know, what, you know, the deficit orientation. Um, but people, because in VR and in VR, they have access, you know, to, to whatever labels or, or diagnoses you have, you're, they're definitely going to be curious about that and how you're going to provide those accommodations, um, which are, tip, you know, are oftentimes extremely like, commonsensical, like, you know, my son will help me out or, I have friends who are going to, you know, real range for taking, and so I just think thinking, anticipating those questions that, that VR or VR is going to have, and, and 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 understanding where they're, you know, where they are coming from, anticipating their, you know, using their language, I think can can be work wonders. So and then uh, moving to business tasks, uh, a sample uh, for the sample for management, uh, and again, you know, pretty typical stuff for management. You know, how are you going to do the books? Um, you know, using QuickBooks or each tree or whatever else uh, people are using in marketing promotions. Um, again, you know, very, I think a smart thing to do when you start is, is, to, is to have a bookkeeper, right? Uh, when I started my business, which isn't, wasn't very complicated, I, you know, which I'm running kind of on the side, I basically, I, I, I got with a bookkeeper and, and an accountant for the first year, you know, and they taught me how to do stuff. And then I basically used their systems. And then when the tax, tax law changed last year, they were for, you know, then you go in and, and get you just want to make sure you're doing that all right, and maybe check in every once in a while. But uh, you get the flow. You know, again, depend. I'm doing a small thing. If you blow up, you know, then hey, right. you, you can afford it, right? Hey, don't just pay pay for that if you can. A marketing promotion too. I I think this is something. And my wife is a graphic designer. Um, that that if it needs to be done well, you know, you can you can learn how to do it well, but especially when you start, you, know, you want to make sure people know about you. You know your story. Um, you know, find a way to share that in a way that makes sense to customers. Which I, again, you know, your 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 product or service will be your biggest promotion. Uh, obviously, once people have a chance to have that. But I just think it. You know, these are our specific skills that people, that people have practiced over time. It's its own profession, both QuickBook accounting and, and marketing promotion. So may if if it works, may be a good idea to do it yourself. Obviously, but then ask for some help. Um, the rest of this stuff, I, I, you know, sales, customer service, managing customer complaints, quality assurance, that's all built into, like, like Danny, like you'll say, just the, knowing how to do your thing, right? Being good at it. A lot of that stuff is just part and parcel, I think, for, 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 for being kind of a, you know, and I would, I don't know if it's expert or master, but just being good at your, whatever you're offering, you know, having good product or service, a lot of this stuff takes care of itself. Um, Tax prep, maintaining website if you're going to do that, you know, social media, that kind of stuff, adjust business and market changes. You know, again, you were talking, Danny, how you had, you know, people who who are running maybe restaurants or doing your cooks, doing stuff like that. So it's you know, having, being in that network is, I think, pretty crucial. Um, and then some contingency plans uh, for management tasks. Uh, you know, in this, this sample, um, the, the individual is going to keep their sister involved, um, up to speed on financial, who had skills, financial, uh, general business management tasks in case you need someone to help me at times, which is a great idea for everybody, right? <laughs> to have somebody else, another pair of eyes, um, not assisting you, somebody with some experience. Um, how to, in the next piece, management tasks that will require training for you to perform, need training, understanding how to reach business financials to make business decisions, how to come up with the numbers. Uh, some basic training, quick QuickBooks, right? So you can do some basic bookkeeping, and uh, if needed, in between bookkeepers or check for quality of work. Um, and the last bullet there: management tasks will require some accommodation and need somebody to help with managing books. It's new, you know, new for a lot of people. You know, it's just good to, to identify that ahead of time, obviously, than uh, than later on in the process. 
Great. So, Dan, if you wouldn't mind, I'll just you just tell me when to move on. We'll, we'll pick okay. Here. Yeah. Well, uh, a concise, you know, uh, non-detailed summary of tasks that will be required for me to, you know, at least get the food truck started is uh, develop the menus, the menu choices that I'm going to be, you know, uh, offering. I'm going to keep it limited. And uh, I'm going to have both uh, on-site locations and online orders. Uh, so I'll need to make sure that the, those two are managed uh, and, and you know evaluated um, regularly because uh, that, that's that's crucial to keeping the business going. Uh, once I know where the locations are set and uh, and I'm, I'm guessing the the online orders. I'll I'll be a day out in advance. So I'll I'll get the online orders the day before. I'll make the food, um, and then I'll I'll have to uh, go purchase the food before I can make it. So that's step three. Then I'll prepare the food. Um, I'll fulfill the online request, and I'll stock the truck with what I'll need for the uh, whatever scheduled location I have. And then I'll make the deliveries, uh, and then. After the deliveries are done, I was thinking deliveries would be more like a lunchtime um, uh, opportunity for food. There's a, a lot of the budget cuts in the state buildings around Frankfurt here. People don't have time to go out and get a, a meal for a half hour lunch. All the cafeterias have been shut down. They're very skeleton crude. And so to be able to offer them a good meal uh, very quickly you know, served or delivered to them much in the way like Domino's pizza. So I wouldn't be actually food trucking, setting up at a government building. I'll just deliver. And so I'll do that first, then I'll go set the truck up. Um, and then once once I've taken care of all the deliveries around lunchtime, I'll set the truck up for the evening shift where I'll be set. And then I'll prepare the food, meaning turn on the heat tables and get everything out of the freezer and brought up to temp and everything. And then I'll start taking orders. And then, uh, you know, collecting fees, collecting revenue for the, the services rendered and the food, food sold. So pretty simple operation in my mind. You know, there's more to it than that, but just in a, a little summary of what's going to happen, it's, that's pretty solid. Right. And then if we move to the, con uh, the con contingencies, sorry. Okay. So I'm, I'm lucky. Uh, the contingency plan uh, is very simple. Basically, the, the food, um, I can freeze a lot of the food so it's ready. So my, can, my son, not only can he make the food if, if it's not already made, uh, most of the food that he can take uh, to handle the, the requirements, the daily requirements, he can, he can make it himself or it'll already be made. So he's, he'll be my partner uh, and, and there'll be days where he won't be there and there'll be days when I won't be there. So both of us will have to be totally, um, you know, trained and uh, capable of handling all the aspects of production. Um, I'll need to familiarize myself and um, Josh and my son will also need to, you know, when we do narrow down which point of sale software we want to use right now, you know, there's Apple, there's, you know, half a dozen you can choose. I haven't really gotten into the details of it, but that will definitely uh, require training to make sure that all the inventory and accounting and, uh, you know, uh, charging the correct fees and taxes and, and what needs to take place is done accurately so we, we follow the letter of the law and uh, don't get in any trouble there. And then the production tasks that will require, you know, um, accommodation. You know, I'm going to, like I said, I, the, the food is going to be very easy to deliver. There's not going to be much, uh, no weight lifting, no uh, long standing, standing for periods of time. Uh, it's going to be air conditioned, so it won't be hot. Uh, I've tried to really streamline the model of the truck so that it would accommodate me and anyone else who has physical limitations like I do. My son doesn't have those, so it'll be a dream for him. He might get bored. It'll be so easy, but... Uh, basically designing the truck so that it, it helps uh, someone with limited physical capabilities be able to still perform the, the task of production. Great. 
Great. And if we move into the management activities. Okay. Uh, bookkeeping, uh, the, whether it's QuickBooks or, you know, depending on which POS system that'll handle most of that, that uh, uh, categorizing and itemizing. Um, not sure uh, which one I'm going to choose yet, but I, that's where I'm looking for help, you know, from, from the outside. Um, I, one of my best friends is a, um, an accountant for a couple of the restaurants in town. Uh, small town, so everybody knows everybody, and uh, you know they uh, current on the law, and they handle big firms and little firms. So I'll probably get him involved, especially on the initial side of it, to make sure that I'm not doing anything wrong uh, that could get me in trouble. The marketing and promotion, um, uh, I have a, even though I don't have a degree in marketing and promotion, I've done quite a bit of it, and I feel pretty confident based on what I see as far as marketing and production. Our promotion in the in the local food truck scene uh, with with the social media accounts, Facebook, you know, Instagram, it makes it really easy compared to the days gone by where you know word of mouth and and uh, looking people up in the yellow pages. It's very easy to find uh, marketing and promotion tools online uh, that it seems like everybody's in touch with. Sales and customer service. I have a just a large background, large, uh, you know, a, a background in that. And, and I understand whether I'm, you know, it doesn't matter what you're selling because I know what they're buying. Yeah, my food has to be really good and my truck has to be really clean and I have to be following all the laws. But at the end of the day, they're buying me. That's what they're buying. So I'm going to have to make sure that, um, you know, I'm doing everything I can from a sales and customer support and, and tap into all that experience that I have and, and like many tasks in the military, you can, you know, marketing is marketing is marketing. Service, service, sales, sales. You just, it's, it sounds complicated, but you just have to make people happy and, and, and put out a, a very uh, consistent product that's high quality. Uh, manager, managing customer complaints. Uh, that's another thing that's, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to need some help on. Just because I don't, um, I haven't really done a lot of managing customer complaints, but my uh, girlfriend is really strong in that area. And I also think that sort of ties into the customer service aspect of it. Um, so as far as uh, managing, I, I have to check uh, just me, but I should have checked other also because I'll be looking for outside service help there. Uh, I know that there are people trained to handle complaints, and I think that's a good idea, especially when you're a small business and one one mistake could maybe put you under. Um, quality assurance, again, that's up to me. That's my name on the truck. And everything about it is going to be up to me. So I'm going to apply those standards that I learned in the military, those high quality standards that usually are, are higher than most people want to want to deal with in the civilian section. But I'll, I'll make sure that the food and everything is is uh, going to meet all the, the health codes and, and the rules that are applied to serving food to the public. Um, a consistent work schedule. You know, it's I want to train. You know, for lack of a better word, I want people to know where I'm going to be, when I'm going to be there. But we have a couple of restaurants here in town that take off to the month of January or the month of June, and they go to a different country, and people are okay with it. You know, so it's establishing a consistent work schedule. I think as long as you're, you know, people know that when they expect you to be open, you're open, and, you, and you're consistent with that, it's pretty easy to establish that, and, and I'll be taking care of it. Uh, managing bank accounts and paying bills, I've done a lot of that, but I haven't done it on the commercial side in a long time. So this is, uh, this is where the software, the point of sale stuff should be able to help out um, and basically do the job for me. And with regards to paying bills, I, you know, I, I'm responsible uh, for running this household, for running the uh, other side of a, uh, another business in the past. And I think uh, paying bills would be pretty solidly in my wheelhouse. Licensing permits and insurance tasks. My uh, brother-in-law is uh, my insurance agent. 
He's already all over everything I need to do. He's very conservative. He'll be he'll be covering me and providing me well above the minimum standards. I know that, so I'll be paying extra for that. I'm hoping that the uh, um, um, veterans uh, VRNE and voc rehab from the state can help me with license and permit, help direct me. You know, but those things as as I mentioned before, online, everything is pretty self-explanatory. They make it very easy. All of our state licensing permits, and you know, I, I pretty much know what I need to do already, having done my research. But they do need to take care, be taken care of. And you know, at this point, it doesn't really make any sense to do it because I, my food truck's not even in operation yet. So once I I have a food truck that I can work with, I'll begin to just instead of just know what I need to do with those permits and, 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 and tap, I'll be doing them. Um, adjust the business, adjust my business to the market changes. You know, um, adaptability is, is the key. It's what we're taught. Adaptability is, is the, the key component to survival of the fittest. It's not who's the strongest. It's not who's the biggest. It's who can adapt to those market changes. So I'm looking forward to, uh, applying all that I've learned, all of my background, that stuff that we learned as veterans, and we've been applying that ability to adapt to a very unique set of skills that we get taught early on, and that's carried through. So the good thing about uh, this particular business that I'm getting into, it isn't flooded. It's not uh, highly competitive uh, just yet in this area. Some areas of the country are very uh, competitive, but right now, as far as being able to uh, adapt to the market changes is pretty, uh, it's pretty, uh, uh, pretty basic, but I, I have other X because there are people, professionals who I definitely would consult if I run into those issues. And the IVMF uh, uh, on-site training that we took last year in, at the University of Missouri in Columbus, they provided us with all sorts of resources for you know understanding how to do research market research demographics and trends and, and it's just really really solid tools that are available to us having been you know part of the program tax preparation again um i have an accountant in the ready uh, waiting to just keep asking me when are we going to get this thing going he's been doing our taxes for a while so uh that, that i'll be I'll be doing the bookkeeping side of it with the help of the POS system, and then I'll be turning that over to a professional. I'm not going to take on the, the legal burden of doing my own taxes. Maintaining the website, my son is uh, uh, pretty good at that, but for the most part, um, I'm going to have to consult a professional to design the website. Uh, I have a nephew in law that is a website designer, and we also have uh, access to IBMF uh, um, um, resources where they will help us design for a, a small budget or a discounted uh, fee. They will help uh, us design and maintain our websites. We have, so we've met many contacts through the, the program and uh, I plan on utilizing those. Wonderful, nice. Um, and then you're, if you wouldn't mind, Speaking about the contingencies for the management plans here. Okay. My contingency plan for these management things would be, you know, if something were to happen to me, uh, because this is my, uh, you know, this is kind of my dream, my uh, goal. Uh, you know, I, I don't know where it would go if something really, you know, permanently happened to me. But as long as I'm around and it's a temporary there's a temporary reason why I'm not uh, handling the management task. My son and girlfriend are, are more capable than I am at, at doing these things. If you want to be honest, they're, uh, they, they both can handle these. And that's, that's been agreed to a long time ago. Uh, they're my biggest support system and my uh, most qualified uh, assistants. So, uh, the management task uh, that I'll need to be trained is, you know, once, like I said, the, the uh, I'll need to be trained on uh, how to uh, uh, do the POS systems, point of sale systems, 
uh, make sure that accounting, software, bookkeeping, making sure that I'm, uh, you know, if I, uh, um, there's, I'm sure there's lots I don't know that I need to know. So that's the training I'll need. It's hard to identify what training I'll actually need until I begin to speak to the professionals that know. Yeah. But I will be relying on them with regards to the, you know, the, the management tasks that I can't handle that were mentioned in the previous slide. And then uh, tasks that require accommodation for me, uh, management tasks, not, you know, like I said, it's going to be a streamlined program. I don't see any real accommodations that I'll need to make for me or for my, uh, my team. So it's, it's pretty streamlined and uh, we're not going to have employees beyond us. So there's not going to be a whole lot of uh, management tasks required that aren't almost just daily daily activities that we'll be very familiar with. Right. And I kind of just ask you just real quick, because um, I think this this comes up, you know, both when starting a business and then when you're talking to funders potentially. And uh, just in terms of um, like uh, at what point or was it since the beginning that when your idea, uh, you kind of have the, have the concept and you're making it more real or, or walking through the, the processes mm -hmm. Uh, involving, like you said, your son and your girlfriend, like family, friends. I just think that's a very, very common support for every, anybody who's, who starts a business at any time. Um, but, um, you know, when, when we're asking like, like IVMF or like systems like VR, VR and E, uh, who, who tend to use professional supports or paid supports, I just, I'm not sure um, just how that, you know, and from their eyes, how that gets integrated. But I guess, could you just talk just briefly just about like that role of, of your, of your close supports from like, okay. Point? Yeah. If you don't mind. Um, if I'm hearing you correctly, you, you're asking me to uh, tell you a little bit of how this all came about from a support stand. Uh, well, just, um, I, I guess, uh, um, I guess from your con the initial concept of the idea, at what point were you, were you uh, I'm going to assume it was pretty much from the beginning, you know, where, where you think of this idea and immediately you're thinking of, well, you know, here's my, my son and my, my girlfriend. This is part of me. They're, they're part of my life. What's their, oh. what's their role going to be? You know, oh, okay. um, just, it's just natural, you know? Okay. Yeah. I think I'm, um, well, the idea to have a food truck is a fairly new idea to me. Um, I, I was always uh, told that I make really good food and I should open a restaurant. But the restaurant thing, it, it's, uh, there's a lot more to it than the food truck thing. Like I mentioned before, uh, uh, the support system you need to run a restaurant is much different than what you need to run a food truck. And I, I would never have undertaken this without the support of um, Elaine, my girlfriend, and uh, my business partner and my son. They've, they've been on board. Uh, it, it's been a, a steady progression of conversations that finally led up to, okay, let's do this thing. It wasn't just a, a quick, uh, um, uh, you know, just, hey, overnight we, we had a discussion and we were going to do this. It wasn't knee-jerk by any stretch. Yeah. I think what also gave us confidence is another support system that we have in our community. We're, we live in a small town. It's the capital of Frankfurt, but uh, with, with the connections and the support that I've uh, gained from being in um, the golf business and having friends who own restaurants and, and businesses in town and Elaine's connections through her employment with the state and now with the federal and her being a local it, it's not just those two that are providing support for me. I did, I'm getting encouragement from friends, from business owners, from, you know, it's, there's a, there's a lot of support out there. And I think that's where, that's really what sort of pushed me over the edge or got me to the point where I had, I had enough in me. I, I, I had enough confidence to say, okay, it's time to do this. It's now's the time. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. Nice. Wonderful, thank you. All right, so we'll wrap up here uh, with the last section. So, um, you know, this is when you, when you think about, you know, what you were just looking at, um, where you just went through the production and management tasks. 
uh, any training needs or accommodation needs. Uh, so now we're thinking of, okay, you know, we've walk, walked through the first three sections, this is who I am, this is why it works for me. Now what do I need to actually do this thing? Uh, and then the last section is thinking of a, essentially a map, you know, where you're, you're trying to, you know, for those things you identify, well, I, I can do all this myself, but this I need help with or need some, you know, need a, a support or to purchase, whether it's like you said, like uh, community, family, or, or something you're gonna pay for. Now what we're doing is we're trying to search for where are those resources and, and how do we go about um, finding those. So just as we talked about, it kind of follows the logic of, of any training that you need to get up to speed, any accommodation needs or and anything else, as we had mentioned, uh, such as financial, marketing, legal, uh, et cetera. So, um, we have this out, and again, as we've said, this is not, when you look at the blank form or the model or, or Danny's uh, version, um, you know, it's a pretty straightforward uh, tool. So just a simple table uh, that, that identifies, you know, from the earlier sections, the training needs, the accommodation needs, any other needs, and then uh, at least two, you know, and again, we can modify this to go for more resources, which would probably be a good idea, but uh, just thinking about, you know, what are the needs and where are you going to go? Um, to get those needs met. And so in the, in the sample plan, moving through this quickly, um, uh, uh, using studio equipment, right? So how do you use that, the new equipment, like we said, like the, the sample uh, had said um, in, in section four? Well, you know, typically when you buy a new piece of equipment or tool, um, uh, you know, the, the, the company uh, will, will teach you on how to use it, right? Or at least get you going and then tell you where to go um, to get further training. Uh, QuickBooks, Small Business Development Centers, uh, Service Corps of Retired Executives, um, uh, you know, thinking about where you're going to get uh, financial, reading financial statements, where you, people are going to help you with that. Um, and uh, accommodation needs, right? So setting up and taking down, well, uh, church friends, um, really, like you already said, Danny, you know, uh, that, that this, that all of us have these type of resources that are, you know, uh, unpaid help or whatever you want to call it, just friends, do you help when they need help? They help you when you need help, that kind of stuff. So, um, and then help managing books, uh, bookkeeper, pay bookkeeper with sales. Um, financial needs with startup expenses. You know, some people have some money that they can bootstrap, others don't. Uh, I'll ask Danny after he talks about his to, to speak briefly about, you know, the, the just the, the you know, if, if you can, everybody who's eligible should be uh, approaching VR, approaching uh, VR and E, you know, VR, the civilian world, VR and E in the, in the veterans world for for assistance with, with multiple things but one of the things they can they can help is with startup expenses and that that can be a really big deal you know uh, during startup um, so if uh, moving on um, to Danny if you wouldn't mind just talking about yours and then um, I'll just ask you a quick question about about VR VR and E and we'll go from there okay well I've never officially created a business owner plan so this was um, um, exciting, uh, nervous, uh, you know, uh, I had lots of anxiety about it because it exposes things that, you know, you don't think about in, in your everyday life and, you know, like reading financial statements, I'll definitely need, you know, training, although I've taken accounting classes and understand bookkeeping, um, financial statements aren't something that I've done a lot of recently. And, you know, uh, if I, you know, I, I was very um, capable spreadsheet, you know, designer at one time, but I haven't done it in a while and I couldn't, I can't remember it all. So uh, I'll definitely need some training and uh, with regards to the, you know, being able to read the financial statements to see whether I'm profitable or not, see whether it's worth me staying in business. Uh, QuickBooks, um, you know, they're, the small business uh, associations and uh, the uh, the different available uh, electronic point of sale and accounting and bookkeeping um, softwares that that uh, are designed to help small businesses succeed they're out there and uh, but at the same time when I do get around to choosing it I'll have to be trained on it because it's it's something new that I haven't done, but I have confidence that I'll be able to handle it and I'll um, pursue any training necessary. Um, helping manage the books. I think initially I would probably, uh, you know, uh, lean heavily on my, uh, my accountant or, you know, the person who uh, I have in, in the ready 
to help me. But once they're trained, you know, the bookkeeping side is pretty easy. It's just making sure you're accurately recording numbers so that uh, they can decipher that information later. And then, you know, from that, you, you come up with your financial statements. And, uh, you know, so it, initially there's going to be some training and some accommodation because I don't know how to do that. Especially with not even knowing which which of the uh, the actual uh, uh, software programs I'm going to use. Um, financial assistance, I um, you know I have I have a small amount of money, but I'm relying heavily on uh, the potential of financial aid assistance from the voc rehab and um, the veterans uh, vocational rehabilitation. Um, you know, with regards to buying these POS systems to help, um, uh, you know, supply my truck in, uh, you know, to get it up and running to, uh, to, um, you know, help out with marketing. Any of the things that we listed before, I could use help on. <laughs> you know, it's, it, while starting a food truck is not like starting a, a you know, a, a restaurant there's still a lot of expenses that I'm going to have to incur and uh, I'll be leaning heavily on them. Uh, and hopefully, you know, I have, I have uh, qualified for both of those programs and I just need to see what angle or how best to apply to them to, to get the, you know, the, the help that I need. Right. Yeah. And just to, to echo that, you know, in terms of, I mean, I, you know, every human being, especially veterans, are resourceful and are able to, you know, um, to, to get their needs met in, in whatever way that, that you know, um, that, that works for them. I just think that, that VR and E and VR can be such an important, um, you know, tool to help you get to stability and profitability, right? Uh, especially during those, those important startup months, which roughly, you know, 18 months, first 18 months before you know, you have costs before sales starts. And, uh, right. and so not everybody has the ability, um, you know, um, and few people I think have the ability to bootstrap, bootstrap businesses, you know, on their own without help from somewhere. Um, and then if you think, just think about timing, you know, just business and life in general, I think is timing super important. And so the ability to move fast to, to like you've said, if you're talking to people, people think it's a good idea, um, you know, to get, get into the market, um, uh, as quickly as you can, you know, again, that fits for you. Um, it, it can help you, I think, you know, while that cat, while you're building that cash flow to get to a point where, you know, where you, you can, you can be stable, you can be profitable much earlier, um, than you would be, you know, uh, if, if, if they weren't here. So, uh, just hugely important, you know, in terms of them being grant like funding as opposed to, to going into debt or loans or anything. So, so wonderful. Um, all right. Well, that that's uh, I that's it. I um, you know I'm super hungry right now, so I'm going to go get a bite, <laughs> bite to eat after this. Uh, I appreciate everybody. You know, when this is uh, hopefully uh, put together and, and uh, edited and everything, it'll it'll be uh, make sense to folks. Um, you know, I, I think wherever we're housing this, when you read it, uh, you'll have my contact information. And if people want to get in touch with you, Danny, they have to come through me first. So Great. I'll, I'll see if uh, you know if. Uh, if, if, if Danny's open to talking, just depending on how, on how busy you are with, with, with everything. Uh, and then I just wanted to thank you and, and uh, you know, wish you, wish you luck. I hope that maybe in the not too distant future, we're able to follow up on this video with kind of a, you know, like tell us what's going on now, you know? Oh, I'd love it. So that'd be really, that'd be really awesome. Yes, I would love it. And th thank you, Russell. It means a lot to have your support. You put a lot of time um, and effort and, you know, and, and I know how busy you are. So I, I just want you to know, I, I really appreciate you, you know, yeah. offering the opportunity for me to, to participate in this program. Yeah, I appreciate it. And I took up way more, way too more time than I wanted to today for you. But I hey. appreciate it, man. We'll be talking. All right. All right. Thanks, Danny. All right. Thank you.